Pressing on. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I appreciate you coming here to listen to these Bible studies. Uh, this season is going to be a series of topical Bible studies. Uh, I probably won't be going through an entire book. Uh, now, also I would like to make a note to non-Christians and to the unsaved. I am not a non-profit entity. I am not attached to any church. I read the Bible. I still live under the First Amendment of the Constitution. While the Constitution is the standard of living for all Americans, the Bible is a Christian standard for living for all the population of the earth. Whether you agree with it or not is between you and God. I didn't write it. I'm just a messenger. I receive no benefit or compensation for doing this. Uh, and today we are comparing heavenly citizenship with U.S. citizenship. Um, you can go to uh, the U.S. immigration website um, and you can get more information there. Uh, the other day, a gentleman from a foreign country asked me to help him find a way to the United States for employment. He had no information. He didn't know the colleges in his area that were attached to a U.S. student visa program. And he didn't know that there was a U.S. consulate in his country that, uh, that he could apply for uh, F-1 visa or H-1B employment sponsorship to the U.S. So I sent him the website. <clears throat> now upon coming to the United States, if going to school, <clears throat> a student must be academically sound, having a good grade point average. The student must not have a criminal record or have terrorist ties or intentions when he receives, when he arrives in the U.S. He must pay for a fee for the F-1 visa, and then the government of the U.S. and the foreign nation must approve of the student obtaining a U.S. visa. When the visa is obtained, the student chooses a U.S. school and makes arrangements for travel. For the first two years, the student cannot work outside the school and can only work part-time while attending school. <clears throat> in year three, he applies for work with an H-1B employer for employment sponsorship. If the student is approved for H-1B status, he can now work outside the school setting. His employer works around his schedule to ensure that he can finish school. If the degree program takes six years or more, then the student must reapply for F-1 visa status in year six. He may also apply for U.S. citizenship at this time. When he graduates, he continues to work and pay taxes as a U.S. resident alien. <clears throat> in year 12, he applies for another visa under H-1B status, and if he hasn't done so already, applies for U.S. citizenship. Generally, it takes 14 to 20 years to become a naturalized citizen. <clears throat> How does a resident alien lose the opportunity to become a U.S. citizen? Here's a small list of things that can cause a loss of opportunity, resulting in deportation. Breaking the law. Not knowing the law is not an excuse. You go to school here to learn U.S. law. Tax fraud. Using your ITIN as a U.S. citizen's Social Security number to obtain tax benefits you're not supposed to have. 
Failure to renew a visa. Dropping out of school. Loss of H-1B status due to being fired or quitting your job. Terrorism. And in the case of a woman, pregnancy. Once you have begun your journey to citizenship, you must continue to participate in lawful behaviors. If murdering, stealing, rape, and illegal drugs was okay in your nation, it's not okay here. When people get born again, their eternal home is not earth. Uh, they, must, they must not only abide by the laws of the land in their nation, but they also must abide by the higher moral standards as stipulated in the Bible. A man or woman is merely passing through this life until death, when their souls are transferred from earth to heaven. When we are born again, we don't just merely obey the law of the land. We also have a higher moral code that we must try to follow as best we can under the grace of Jesus Christ by his blood. How does a born again person lose heavenly citizenship? Here's a list of things that can cause a loss of salvation. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, uh, Mark three twenty-two to thirty. Uh, now you have to be qualified to do this. You have to be saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and you had to have handled the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that is saying that he is, uh, he is akin to a demon. Or that he is a wicked, evil thing. The Holy Spirit is extremely sensitive, and he will not forgive you for this, and he will leave you, and you will be in a state of condemnation. This cannot be forgiven. Suicide is actually a murder of self. You cannot call yourself unworthy of living your life and call and kill yourself. I mean, this is a cop-out. And God will not forgive you for this, particularly if you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ before taking your life. The following can be forgiven, but there are consequences both during our lives and after death. You must stop participating in these behaviors. There are individual case-by-case -case situations and it's usually tied to the culture. The key to these commandments is to cover them all by loving your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, if you don't want people doing it to you, don't do it to others. <clears throat> Number three, not acknowledging God as supreme, Exodus 20, 5 and 6. Rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ before death. We get several opportunities before death to be saved. After death, it's just too late. John 3, 36. John 3, 36. Sexual immorality of any type. Leviticus 18. Adultery. When a, sp when a spouse cheats on the other spouse. Homosexuality. This is when men have sex with men and women with women. A man cannot worship God as a woman and a woman cannot worship God as a man. Incest. This is when close family members uh, up to first cousins have sexual relations. Generally, second cousins may marry. Bestiality. This is sex with animals. Fornication under carnal knowledge. This is when two unmarried people have sexual relations. Sex with the dead. Idolatry. This is the act of worshiping a false god. This may require doing things which God has stated is immoral. This often includes animal and human sacrifice. If you are saved and you do not put away your idols and you die, you will have lost your heavenly citizenship.
Exodus 20, 3 and 4. Witchcraft. The use of satanic rituals to conjure demons to do something you want. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Galatians 5, 20. Witchcraft is the use of demonic rituals to make something come to pass. Necromancy is the act of raising a human spirit from the dead to communicate with it. It is a demon. Spirits of humans cannot be divined from the dead. The use of charms and chants. Astral travel. The exception to this is when God has taken you temporarily into the spirit realm to reveal things to you. If you do it on your own, you have no protection. There is a life band that remains attached to your body while you're traveling outside of it. If it is broken and you have not been saved, and you die, and you are condemned. Dishonoring parents as children and teenagers. Adult children must honor their parents in considering their counsel, but they do not have to take the counsel. <coughs> this is not dishonoring parents. Um, see Exodus 20.12. <clears throat> now, if you're a teenager or a child and you're living under the household, and you're, uh, uh, and, uh, you're being subsidized uh, by your parents, you must obey your parents in everything while you're living under their, while you're living under their custody. <clears throat> Spreading rumors and false accusations against your neighbors. Exodus 20.16. Again, if you don't want people doing it to you, don't do it to other people. Habitually stealing. Exodus 20, 15. Murder in cold blood. This is when you just decided that someone wasn't worthy of life and killed him. There is forgiveness for this, but you still have to pay earthly consequences. Uh, you still have to pay the earthly consequences. <clears throat> Exodus 20, 13. Coveting your neighbor's family, property, or prosperity. Work to get your own. Coveting leads to lying, stealing, and murder. Exodus 20, 17. When you covet, uh, what you're doing is you are wishing that you had what somebody else had. Um, and, and this is what causes you to do things that are not right in order to obtain them, whether it be another man's wife, uh, his property, or his prosperity, okay? Um, and like I said, coveting leads to lying, stealing, and murder. Matthew 25, read the whole chapter. I'm just going to summarize. The chapter is pertaining to individuals of, in the body of Christ. Now the whole body of Christ is given tasks to complete while living on planet Earth until we die or until he comes to take believers with him to join the Father in heaven. So the parable of the ten virgins and the parable of the ten talents applies to all believers whether they are Jews or Gentiles. In the parable of the ten virgins, the groom gives ten women lamps and oil. They are told to keep their lamps lit until he returns from a far country at an unannounced time. Five of the women take his instruction and maintain the oil in their lamps to keep the wick burning. The other five didn't maintain their lamps and they went out. When the, re when the groom returned, the five women that kept their lamps lit were accepted into the wedding chamber to be wed to the groom. The other five women had to go buy oil to light their lamps. By the time they returned, the groom had closed the engagement to outsiders. The servants told them they couldn't come in. It was just too late. The lamp is our hearts, and the oil is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the groom soon to return. Don't let your fire go out. 
In the parable of the ten talents, the master of the household gave uh, gave uh, one servant ten talents, another five talents, and another one talent. And they were told to make good use of it until he returned from receiving a crown to be a king in a far country. His return would be unannounced. <clears throat> when he returned, he called the men to accountability of what they were given. The man with ten talents presented him with twenty. The man with five presented him with ten. The man with one presented him with the original talent that he was given. The first two men were awarded stewardship of the master's business. Then the man with one talent was asked why he didn't double his talent to two talents. The man said that the master was evil and he reaped where he did not sow. And he was afraid, so he buried it. Uh, the master told him that he could have put it into a bank account to gain interest, and it would have doubled. The man with one talent was sent away, and the talent was given to the man with twenty talents. The first two men were hired to participate in the newly crowned king's business activities, while the one with one talent was sent away. Again, Jesus is the master, and we are the servants. We are all given gifts according to our abilities to further the kingdom of God. Jesus is in heaven right now. He has received his crown, and he will be returning soon, at an unannounced time. What will we have to present him upon his return? Will he be happy with us, or will he send us away? In the parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus gathers those who identified themselves as believers. On the right were sheep, and on the left were the goats. The sheep did, was, did what was right in his sight, while the goats did not. He sent the goats into eternal punishment. Okay, now this is an invitation for you to give your soul to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. If you have watched this video and you know in your soul that giving your life to Jesus is the right thing to do, uh, then take this time right now to do it and then find a Bible and go www.gateway.com www.biblegateway.com um, and you could probably go to a church in your area and get a free one. Uh, don't put the decision off because you are given this specific opportunity at this specific time for a reason. You may not be here the next minute, hour, day, or week after you've heard this message. Uh, so, uh, so I implore you, give your soul to Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. I'm pressing on the upward 